Hi, my name is Amy and I am joining Happily Thriving Heidi at Heidi Sumbles DIY. Other creators and I will be included in this playlist that I will have and I will have the link down below. I will link Heidi's channel as well. And today I've created two projects for today's video and the supply list will be listed below. This is the project I went with. Um, I used a finished dishwasher tablet container doing a trash to treasure just showing you I had taken the wrapper off. I made a little template so I could um, cut out the the uh, what I wanted there, which I'm, I decided to make a birdhouse. And so I had just drawn that on with my Sharpie. And then I used um, an X-Acto knife to kind of cut through there. When I did this, I um, did most of it with the X-Acto knife. Then I went along with just a regular scissors and trimmed up as needed after the fact. And this is what was left over um, when I finished trimming that out. And there is the start of our birdhouse. Okay, um, looking at the directions on the Waverly chalk paint on something like this, this plastic, it says you could clean it or you should clean it with Windex. So that's what I did is I cleaned all sides with the Windex and I decided to use the Waverly Agave color. Um, it's just a very nice color I have used for years and um, my chalk paint lasts for a long time when I'm just using it for little projects like this. And so once everything's dry, um, just start applying it to right directly onto the plastic it's not something that I'm going to handle much, so it should stay on there for a good long time. This video, I'm just showing that um, I used a piece of straight cardboard as a guide. And my goal is to put some, um, I wanted to put some stripes in there so it looks like boards. And so I'm using the agave, I'm using a light color, and then I'm using a black. The black kind of gives it a little bit of a shadow in there. And so as I carry on doing this, you'll see um, that it, it'll show that the black is going to be where that separation is, where the, where the faux look of the wood plank is. It does look a lot better when it's dry. Um, but I just carried on and just tried to, to do some blending as I went along and did this around the entire the entire plastic piece of my birdhouse. But I did paint the entire birdhouse first. Here's my planks that I finished. And like I said, when it's dry, it looks a whole lot better. This is where I had put the, the roof on the birdhouse. I went along the edge. Um, the birdhouse structure is made of another piece of cardboard as a thicker cardboard. I took my hot glue gun and I went around the, the opening twice to give it extra hot glue. And once I got that on there, you, as you know with the hot glue, you've got to work kind of quickly so then I pressed it down into place and held it firmly and then I did check it pulling up on the ends just to make sure that everything was secure and then I was looking it over and I noticed that there are some gaps in between the cardboard and the uh, plastic so then I took some twine and I'm going to just put some uh, hot glue in there and just kind of fill it in just so it gives it you know so there's not those gaps and it also adds to the character of the piece um, twine is always a good thing to use with you know any farmhouse decor and so I'm just filling in if a person had a bigger gap you could actually go around it twice. Um, one, one time for me with the twine was adequate, and so that's what I did with this one. And I just went around the entire design with my twine.
And this is where I ended up finishing right back at the front. I um, trimmed it off and my glue gun was kind of running out of glue so I was holding things in place. And just trim that off with the scissors. And then on the top, I used some burlap ribbon. It was only a certain width, um, but I thought, well, I will just layer that along the, the rooftop there. And so I measured it, did a little eyeballing with that, trimmed it off. And again, I just uh, used the glue gun to apply some glue and then quickly lay down the, the burlap so it sticks properly. And of course, this would be a project you'd want to only keep in the house because of, you know, the it wouldn't work outside. It wouldn't it wouldn't hold up. But a short or a cute little uh, cute little project for inside the house. And then the last uh, strip I have there, it was. My burlap ribbon was a little bit long. I was trying to conserve and use a little short piece, but I decided to just go ahead and use one of the larger, you know, a whole piece of the burlap. And then I decided, well, I will trim it off and then I can just um, tuck it underneath and it'll look fine. And it did. So as you see, I'm just measuring eyeballing things and trimming with my scissors. And then I just inverted the birdhouse and added some glue and just apply down. And that gave it just kind of a nice little finished edge there. And that's where I decided pretty much that this is gonna be the front of the birdhouse with that nice finished edge. All right, so there it is. And every birdhouse needs a little nest on top. And I really didn't have a whole lot. So I used some twigs um, and they were, it looked like my husband had gotten some off of some bushes and it looks like this might've been a thorny, not real thorny, but like a, some kind of a, a bush out there that th they were more pliable and thinner and so I was able to manipulate those and kind of make it into a circular shape and so with more burlap twine and some of that um, those more pliable twigs I was able to make somewhat of a bird's nest and so I just uh, worked with that using my glue and manipulating it so it kind of uh, looked more outdoorsy there. And then I'd also put some of those twigs along the top of the birdhouse there too. And here I am just putting on more of the twine around the birdhouse. And I went around twice and then trimmed it off and glued it on the back. And so there, um, I decided this is a bird, a bird ballet, or is a bird suite from uh, Stampin' Up. I will list that below. This piece of paper has a lot of birds in there, so I just cut it out, cut the bird out, and I took and cut out a piece of black, a black circle, so I could mount that on there. So it looks like the little bird is peeking out. And this is going to be the little hole in the birdhouse. And I just put, again, with the glue gun, put some glue on there and just pop that on there. And held in place. And then if you can kind of see, I've already added on a few more sticks and a little ribbon on there. And this is a, just a little piece of 
twig that I hot glued, we cut that off. That gives the bird a little perch. And I, the button that I've got on there, I didn't really like, so I'd taken that off. And you can see that that's gone. But um, I really like how this turned out. I thought it was just so cute and farmhouse looking. And with the ribbon on there, everybody likes the, the buffalo check ribbon. Yeah, so there he is. And the little egg I put in there, I had to kind of cut him down with, with another egg, but it turned out fine. The next uh, DIY I have is Nesquik. Um, using the, the Nesquik container, I used Waverly Chalk Elephant Paint. And the first thing I did was um, I wanted to get rid of that yellow color. So I'm just painting that on there and I'm going to just let that dry. And then I ended up doing a second coat. We're going to be covering the rest of this container with some paper. So all I needed to do was the bottom. Here's the gray paper I used. And I'm using a little gadget that stamp card makers use and it's called a crimper and my goal with this is to give it that galvanized tin look so you can see how it's raised and um, you can feel it it's got a texture on it and very much um, farmhouse looking so run it through the crimper And it was it turned out really nice. I'm using some of my um, liquid glue and I put it on a little paper there and I'm just taking a sponge and I'm going to um, apply the glue right onto the container. Then I'm going to take the paper and just press it down into place and holding it down so it, it uh, stays in, in place. The paper is now on and I'm just taking a little bit more of the glue and applying that in there so the edges will stay secure and that everything holds in place nicely. Okay, so now I'm going to be painting that top part of the yellow that you can see there. And in hindsight, I should have did that when I did the bottom and let everything dry because now I'm contending with painting and trying not to get it on the, the uh, gray paper. But um, this is how I did it. And so um, if I were to give you some advice, I would say get this part done as well. Do that right away. But we got it done. Um, just going to apply that. And then I ended up touching up with the second coat and I did put some on the inside where it's yellow. You can see that just um, so in case you were to peer in there, you wouldn't notice the yellow. Here I'm taking a dry brush and I'm just adding some of that elephant color again and um, starting the process of distressing this little galvanized container. The colors I used were that elephant gray and I used a little a little brown that it looks like black but it's actually a little brown a little light gray and then there's just a white in there. When you look at a, a picture of something that's tin and galvanized like this um, sometimes the when you have moisture on your galvanized material it can rust and it's usually a white rust this is about the final part of it and i'm just painting this little piece of wood white and letting it dry and then i ended up putting the word garden on it and i put some burlap uh, some of the twine around there just to add a little touch there's my finished sign and i made it look a little uh, distressed with the little um, black sp uh, speckles on there. So it looks kind of an enamel surface. And here is the, 
uh, glue gun again and I'm just applying this and pressing it into place. Okay, and here is the finished pro product. I've got some flowers sitting in there and I didn't even have any uh, foam to put in there, but I thought that would just add to it a little bit so you can just see how, how that turned out. I really enjoyed making it. I had a lot of fun with that. I want to thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more crafting fun.